So when I said last week that the Chicago street race was going to have at least one red flag, wasn't thinking it was going to be the weather causing the red flag, but Hey, you know, it, uh, I guess technically the cup series race never had a red flag. It was only Xfinity one, but you know, it interesting weekend. We'll talk about that here. Uh, mid Ohio had some interesting activities and, uh, a lot of Formula One drivers riding each other out on radio. So far, Racing's Garage Talk. I'm DJ Flook. Eric Richardson. We'll we'll finish with the Chicago because that's where I think we've got the most to talk about. But starting in uh, the Red Bull ring, hilarious over the weekend with the track limits. Um, I read somewhere that they had 1,500 potential violations that the stewards had to look at. And they said there's just no way they would have been able to properly look at all 1,500 of them. Um, yeah, Every a lot of, a lot of penalties. Lap. But then it was, was it, the, that turn nine kept yeah. getting all of them. But then uh, I guess it was the Aston Martin filed a protest over the track limits. And uh, what was it? Eight drivers got penalized post-race for it. Yeah, Ocon with the highest of 30 seconds. Yeah, they're they're joking that uh Ocon had so many penalties he would be ready to start the race in 2021, which I thought was pretty funny, but um yeah. What do you do about that? Is it the track or is it the driving? I mean, these are <clears throat> arguably the best drivers in the world. Can you really like it was everybody. I mean, it wasn't like it was the same driver going off every single time it was i think what was it two drivers that didn't get penalties or at least warnings for off track but max was one and i forget the other i'm drawing a blank on who it was but yeah it's just and you know it's not like they were going way outside a lot of it was turn nine and they were six inches over I mean, yeah, it was just barely, and then they're just ratting each other out. If you want to force your track limit more, put grass there. That'll stop them from going, and they'll change up how they drive. It might slow the track down just a touch. That it was Perez in, uh, what, Q3? Yeah. yeah put himself is, uh... second, and then got his track deleted <laughs> again. I think he had two or three get deleted. Missed, missed Q3 for the No, it was Q2. Or yeah, yeah, he missed Q. Q yeah, it was Q two. He, he, he missed Q three for the fourth straight race. But he rallied back for what a fourth place finish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so finally had a good run. No, he got third. Yeah, he got third. Because he had uh, he did. Charles, yeah, Charles Leclerc finished second, Carlos and then is unhappy with his team again. Yeah, Carlos Sainz had fourth. But then got bumped down to fifth after his penalties, and Lando Norris actually walked away in fourth this weekend. That voted for yeah, Lando as driver him. of the day, and yeah, good for him. Out there, it was really close. We've got uh, he had a great run. Yeah, we got Silverstone this weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. I I am too. Um, I I don't want to say I'm I'm trying to like jinx anything here. But Red Bull, specifically Max, has it's just been way too long without him having a problem. You know, bad pit stop, cut tire, DNF. It, he, I mean, uh, his closest incident was his, you know, him and Checo almost taking each other out. Well, he kind of gambled on Sunday. He did. That was ridiculous. And he overrode his own team, pitting <laughs> with basically two laps to go so he could go after fastest lap that his teammate held it's not like he I needed mean, the point when you're in the zone and you're just cruising i mean i i don't think we've ever seen anything like this before you know even in the the days of the ferrari dominance and even you know Michael Schumacher and his teammates would trade podiums from time to time, even mm -hmm. in their their best year or you know change winner. Um, what's this five in a row for Max? Yeah, 
Red Bull's won everything. Yeah, yeah. They, the Red Bull has won every race going back to Abu Dhabi, I believe, last year. I think what Max has six and Checo has three. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I did see a couple interesting things. One, it was a little Instagram clip. They're talking to first stop in and going, What do you like to do in your free time? And he talks about he likes to get on sim racing. Is he's naturally good on the real cars, but he was talking about how he likes to see the not real racers and how they drive in the sim. And he learns from them to help make himself better and trying I mean, to improve. Unreal. Like this is that's that is a true like it's it's scary when you have someone with that much talent, but they're also a true student of their sport because there's there's so many people that have, you know, they're either, you know, they're not super skilled, but they work extremely hard or they're mm-hmm. extremely talent, naturally talented, but they kind of coast by and they never hit their full potential. And one of the people I, I saw with that comparison was Lance Stroll said he's he's naturally talented but people inside of Aston Martin say he kind of just cruises and the reason why he's not up there with with Alonso is because he just doesn't put in the work that we see all the time Max will get on i racing and do what 10 Sebring races in a row yeah and and pull he, and win every single one of them <laughs> he races trucks quite often I, that is my favorite. It's just Max Verstappen. Here he is running you know, Class C truck races at Talladega on Iris. <laughs> but he will is, not. He will not do that in real life. He has already said that. That is cool that he's talking about how he likes doing it because he can learn from non-real racers and how they drive different lines and do things a little bit more creatively rather than what you're supposed to do racing. Right. But, and you know, about, good for him. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Then how about Lewis Hamilton complaining <laughs> about Red Bull and being need to pull back or you can't start developing until like August 1st. And Max's response was like, well, you weren't complaining when, you know, you were running away with everything years ago. <laughs> like, it's a fair, fair response. Yeah, I saw the response. I'm like, yeah, that's fair. I, I do like Toto's comment when Lewis is on the radio and he's like, Lewis, we know the car's bad. Just drive it, please. <laughs> and then he's complaining about the track limits and it's like, you got hit too. That was bad. I mean, that was, that was a tough weekend. Um, I think they do need to redesign the track a little bit or maybe take out some of that curbing and put grass in that'll fix your track limits real quick. Otherwise, you will have many more DNFs on your hand. So, on the new note of IndyCar, we go to Mid-Ohio. Our good friend Hunter Hughes was in attendance this weekend. He's, uh, what, turn four during the race? Yeah. And, kind of uh, four through six range. Rookie Benjamin Peterson. Is everybody's favorite now. Yeah, he did not make many friends this weekend. Um you know, when you see David Malukas mildly upset, you know something has really gone wrong because I don't think we've ever... I mean, he wasn't even that upset. Like, I was upset for his happy-go-lucky standards. But That's it's funny. like I listened to it and it's like, if you don't know what he's actually talking about, you wouldn't think he was mad. No, you he's don't. so happy. And he's just like, he made an enemy out of me today. I was just like, that is the jolliest, like, angry... You know, that's the most... It it really came off as the most like passive aggressive thing you've ever seen, but I, it's just his personality. He's just so happy go lucky that it's like when he's mad, it, it, it didn't look like it, but he was upset. And it's like yeah, if you make you know, him upset, you yeah. did something bad. You know, I'll give Peterson credit though. Um, when he's trying to hold off Polo and holding him up, he is the last car in the lead lap, and if somebody goes off track you're pulling over a minute catching up. You got to defend to not go a lap down. Right. But after that, but once you lose pace and you can't keep up or you're not catching that car in front of you because Polo is going to move faster than you are. And if you're not catching and then you have multiple cars, a lap down, 
what are you doing? It's the no, blue flag. Just get out get, of the way. Get out of the way. There's nothing for you to gain. And you've heard award. racing for position. How to award who gets angry at people is like, not your day, man. Get out of the way. Fair. The only thing that came up, and I think it was right towards the end, was trying to defend position with Rosenquist for 25th place. What the, I mean, yeah, I guess every place you're holding counts. up top five racers. Yeah, you know, and Malukas is in six. Like, it was his best performance of the year, and, and he's, you know, couldn't get by. And again, it's called racing, not let people buy. But there's a point where, like, you know, it's it's the right thing to do. Just get out of the way. Yeah, just get out of line, ease up. And a big wreck early on. Yeah, Marcus Erickson goes up and over Rosenquist. Oh, pretty much ended his day. Speaking of wreck, ooh, Simon Paginow. Ooh. Oh, I break. saw that one. Did they, they call that break that game? Break, break failure. Yeah, break failure. We. So we've been on that. It's coming off that back stretch. He loses his brakes, goes around. It's a little bit of a downhill mm-hmm, yep. into that sand trap, and he flew and then tumbled. Luckily, he walked away. Yeah, and I don't. I haven't heard anything since Sunday. I mean, he wasn't cleared to race. Connor Daly, one race absence, and he's back in the field again. Um, he got called Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. So he Thumbers. walked in cold, and you know he started dead last, worked his way up to twentieth, almost caught his old ride. Yeah, uh, finished right behind um Ryan Hunter, Hunter Ray. Ray. Yeah. So you know what? Good for him. I mean, that was a good, you know, you come in ice cold, no practice, somebody else's car. And uh I, I would say normally you don't say 20th place is a good good result, but in that situation, that was a good result. Well, and it works out too that he's in Indiana. They were central ohio so at best you're maybe three hour drive yeah but no he flew or at least a chopper part way or yeah, something he, was, he, he got there quickly you know they get him give him the call he's there yeah get a call at 6 a.m you're gonna be there by 10 question is is he gonna be doing the toronto race is pageant now gonna be back do we ever see pageant now in a car again i mean he's i think we just, will get in we just talked about that i mean he's not a young guy you know no. he's Talked about that during live. Yeah, it's IndyCar has an age problem right now. They're they're stars, they're past winners, they're all in their 40s Mm -hmm. or late 30s. And you know, there's a few young we talked we talked about there's a few potential young stars, you know, like uh talked about Malukas needs a better ride, and then two days later he now you know it's public that he's leaving Dale Coin at the end of the year, and it sounds like you know Ganassi's a landing spot, Andretti's a landing spot. Um, if I were him, I would be all over that that Ganassi seat. Yeah, if Ganassi is an option, I'm. I wouldn't mind oh, going yeah. Andretti, but just with where they're at currently, they've gotten tripped up over their own shoelaces and in in fighting with the drivers. You know, it's just how much do you want to be teammates with Grosjean? Yeah, that that's. It was an um. Where were they before mid Ohio? Detroit. Why am I drawing a blank? Um, Will Power was upset with him. Yeah, yeah, he and was basically like he needs to be punched in the face. I mean, Will Power said that about a few people over the years, but, <laughs> but fair enough. Uh, there were there was an interesting thing about Grosjean, and it's like you know, relatively speaking, he comes over from Formula One. Drives a Haas machine. He's, you know, he's not exactly, you know, star material. It's not like, you know, he was competing for podiums every week. He had fresh off his near death experience. Um, and, you know, with Drive to Survive and that popularity, like he came walking over and everyone's like, this is a must see guy. And a lot of attention on him. This, the Formula One guy almost died and somehow didn't. And, He's had a handful of of good runs, but you know, you get him onto an oval and it seems like he's crashed out of every oval race we've seen. Yeah, ovals crashes out and then road races seems to be about 50-50. If he's yeah, up front, he's, he's competing, but even then it's I mean, he's had what three or four second place finishes in the last two seasons, something like that. Yeah. Uh it's just 
they're talking about like, oh, will Andretti give up on him already? I'm like, well, look at the rest of that team. Are you going to give up on the, you know, you've got one win in the last like two years out of that, that squad. On a soaking wet Indianapolis road course. Oh, I forgot about that one. No, I'm, I was talking about Kyle Kirkwood this year with. Oh, uh, Kirkwood did. Yeah, win. Long Beach. So they have I, two I completely... in the last couple of years. Okay, yeah, okay. So two in the last year plus. Um, Colton Hurd is on his like third strategist this year or something like that. Um, he's been mistakes, bad strategy, you name it. Then you got Grosjean. Who who am I missing? Oh, Kirkwood was three, and then uh, Devin uh, De Francesco hasn't exactly been a. He's a mid pack guy. He's not even a mid pack guy. He's like, he. I don't think he's had a top ten finish yet in two seasons. I'm not sure he's had much over top fifteen. Uh, problem is, it's he's one of the guys who brought the sponsor with him you know, pay for ride, like a better word. And for that fourth seat, you know, are you going to find a fourth sponsor or are you stuck with this guy? And almost seems like they're stuck with him. Although there's talk that they want to run him. Fourth place finish. Okay. Detroit. And that was one of, yeah, I do remember that now. That was like his best performance since he joined the series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of drama. Yeah. How about Alex Pillow, though? So good. He's so... The problem is, like, they're not going to keep him. And he's he's going to be off to F1. The bigger, That's going to hurt any car if he is. leaves. He's, he's what, 24 or something like that? Yeah, he's, he's a young guy. And he's already won a championship. He's... Probably could take half the rest of the races off unofficially as long as he starts them and still probably win the championship. Like, let's see, he was born in '97. What's that make him? 26? Yeah, 25, 26, depending on when his birthday falls. Yeah, born on April 1st, actually. Hmm, April Fools. He, uh, uh, he can skip the next two races and still have the lead. He's 110 yeah. points up. I mean, it's that's crazy. He's just he's so good, and they're going to lose him. And I was reading this on Reddit today and, you know, they're talking about, oh, IndyCar is going to try to expand and potentially run a postseason non-points race in Argentina. Um, uh, Campino did a event down there. They shipped a car down there and he did some kind of event and it sold out. And like, I guess it's like he hasn't made much of an impact on the track, but like, they love him in Argentina and he has a huge following down there. And it's, it's, it's a good idea. Like they, if, you know, logistically things can come together, they said typically outside of the U S and Canada, the event pays some of the fees to ship down the equipment and the cars uh, to it. That if you do that, you have a postseason non points like exhibition race, for you know basically a cash prize payout race in Argentina and start trying to take you know take advantage of that and that's you know that's the thing of the previous leadership of of the IndyCar series would not have even thought about mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's outside the box they're taking advantage of an international market that is glued it's like this guy's not a star in the US he's not a star in the series but you know what Argentina is an underserved market for racing I, in my opinion you know, you think of racing. Yeah, you think of racing in South America, and it's Brazil. Brazil. It's all about Brazil. And Argentina's a pretty big country down there too. I mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. Like if you can pull this off, I think that would be great for its international exposure. Because right now it's it's kind of a niche thing, and that was the complaint: is that oh, we're going to change up the schedule. We're going to change up the schedule, and then November comes along, and it'll be the exact same schedule. You know, it's crazy. Polo has won four of the last five. He was on pole at Indy. And if not for that round of pit stops where VK ran into him, he maybe he's winning five in a row right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He would and have been in there at the end. I was watching it at the Indy Grand Prix. He just sits and basically drives along in that first 
stint. Then their pit strategy, he gets in and out. And then all of a sudden you look and he's like 10 seconds up. That's a shame because they're not going to hang on to him. He's going to chase thing, that Formula One money and that Formula One ride and that exposure and off he goes. And some of it, it was the same thing at the Indy Grand Prix, Mid-Ohio. And Road America ended up going the same way. That was one I was trying to think of where they were at last. Road America, oh my God. maybe been an early caution, but there's Mid-Ohio ran green the entire race except for... Uh, what the they do beginning. they start lap four yeah and then yeah. it all comes down to just pit strategies this would be i don't want to see anybody crashing but it'd be fun to get a caution bunch people up and get some racing the mid ohio almost got boring it's what you're watching battles for fifth place eighth place it's like a formula one race <laughs> yeah with it's a far awesome smaller audience. Plo doing this, but at the same time, you're getting the Formula One issue. He's so good right now that, hey, you know, let's just pit for fun and see what happens. I'm going to risk losing the race just to just spite because my I'm team. Bored. Just, just because I'm bored and I want to spite my teammate. And Is there any chance that Checo is in that Red Bull seat at, for the first race next year? Well, he's already been Max's teammate the longest of anybody. He does seem to run teammates out a lot, doesn't he? I think you end up with so much pressure on the drivers, they just can't perform. I mean, you, and that's that's the, the problem. They too, also is... had young drivers. Oh, yeah, and Alex, Alex Albon. But it's it's tough because like you know if you're in a Haas machine or you're in a Williams machine, there's no expectation to win. There's no expectation of podium, and it's like you got to get some points. And even then, with the current setup, you're fighting for four positions among seven teams. Fourteen yep. cars for four spots, unless there's an issue because Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull will take six of them. Yep. And you can almost say Aston Martin's going to take two. And probably Lando Norris now. He seems to have things figured out. So really, you're battling for 10th. If you're lucky. And Alex Albon in that Williams machine, man, he has looked good driving He's that. He's overdriving that car. He is overdriving that piece of garbage. And <laughs> it's, it's looked really good. And he's so pumped up. He had that seventh place finish the other week. And, oh, man, he was so pumped. Those were two of the three races. What about the big one that happened? Oh, wow. Uh, we, we've been talking about this, the second most of any event coming up this year behind the Las Vegas race in the fall. And we've talked about, is this a good idea? No, probably not. Logistically, is it going to be a good idea? No, it will not. Um, well, speaking of which, 24 Formula One schedule came out. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, China's back in the mix and they've shifted things around to try to not do like Miami. Abu Dhabi, get the point. And Vegas is back on it. Yeah, uh, they got a three year deal. So, you know, short of some disaster happening, we're going to see at least for three years. Um, so the Chicago race, I, I you know, it was tough. You you got out there in the practice a little bit wet and cars are going sideways. Kevin Harvick had a big incident. Stenhouse trashed his car. Chase Elliott had a big incident during practice. Uh it was it was rough. I think chat Ross Chastain started like what 34th or something like that. No. Yeah. Uh and the Xfinity guys had like 50 minutes of practice or something like that. If that, uh, um, they wrecked a lot of cars in qualifying too. Yeah. It's just, it was a very expensive morning for both the cup and the Xfinity teams. And 
the best the best part of it was during the the practice and you know you see stenhouse uh coming off of michigan avenue on that loop there and just trash his car and they cut back to the you know, the nbc booth and dale jarrett and uh brad doherty are sitting there and brad doherty own, you know co-owns that car just has this look on his face like just shaking his head and dale jarrett's like Oh man, you just pay you. Uh, that's an expensive bill this morning for you, and he's just like, nah. It, it just didn't look good coming out of practice. Then the rain came. It ended up got... washing the Xfinity. They postponed uh, yeah. it and never came back. Never came back. They got almost. They were two laps short of the halfway point. Uh. And it's just looking at the actual racing part of it. I was like, okay, this looks pretty good. This Mother Nature wasn't cooperating. Which happens if you've ever been in Chicago in June and July. The freak rainstorm and freak thunderstorm has been known to happen. But they were getting like five inches of rain over the weekend there. Um, that a little more. Unusual. Roads were flooding. Sewers were geysers in the middle of the road. So the... Sunday, you know, we were talking about, okay, we're going to do Garage Talk Live Race Day. We got it in, or at least part of it in. And, you know, I put up, uh, I put up the photo and I put rain clouds over us and <laughs> a rain delay and put that I in. I still can't it. believe they even started that thing on Sunday. <laughs> I, I know. I, it dried I'm, out. I, I'm sitting downstairs right before. And I, I'm actually like starting to fall. My kids are watching TV. I'm like kind of dozing off on the couch. And I'm like, yeah, let's see what's going on. Let's see if they're any closer to starting. And I pull up my phone and I open up, you know, open up Hulu and turn on the race. They gave the command to fire. And I'm, I'm texting Eric. I'm like, they just gave the command to fire. This thing is going. Let's, are, are we doing this? <laughs> and I can run upstairs. I'm firing up, you know, Firing up OBS, getting the Zoom ready to go, getting the lights on, grabbing my my Malort, which I never drank this weekend anyway, just because this was thrown together so quickly. I I was shocked. I'm so glad I checked that because uh, we got in, you know, just in time to to see the start of this race, and I I loved every minute of it. It was phenomenal. I I it blew my expectations away. My expectations were like way down here, so I mean, it was a pretty low bar, but. I loved every minute of this of it. There were a lot of cautions and they had to figure out those tire barriers. Yeah. Cars well, were burying themselves no, underneath it. No, Noah Gregson was burying himself underneath. Kyle Bush did once. He Gregson did, did what? Two or three times. Yeah. I'm sure um, he was thrilled to not have to drive turn six anymore. Yeah. He was not having a good, good day. Uh, Denny Hamlin went sliding into the tire wall and turn two at one point. Uh, you know, had the they 14 sh- car pile up they they you yeah, have a the traffic jam off of jackson street um that was that was hilarious you just see all these cars turn in and, and it's just like man if there would be horns on those cars you just be like, wah, wah, like yeah, i think the race i think it went better than what i was kind of anticipating but way better kind of and, and it was wet it was raining what happened to yeah, yeah, the rain didn't help. The, so the seven, we'll the, the fun big, to see a dry race. The the big pile up, totally expected that to happen. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen at least once. Uh, uh, but the biggest story of this whole weekend was the winner of this race, <laughs> Shane Van Giesbergen, SVG, <laughs> SVG, the Australian, the Australian supercar uh stud he's a three-time champion over in australia the supercars are from from a a car perspective are probably the closest thing to a nascar on the international stage and he looked really good in practice and i'm just like you know it's we'll see how he does when he's surrounded by you know 35 other cars it's one thing to run supercars they run street races they do they absolutely do and he's he's comfortable running on a street course except everywhere but the key difference though is in the supercars he's sitting on the right side of the car shifting with his left hand where now he has to go to the left side of the car shifting with his right hand and look like a complete natural uh and just he was clutching too oh he was clutching yeah and a lot of the drivers don't clutch as they made clear and 
you know, they had a camera on his feet that they kept showing periodically. And man, he just looked so comfortable out there. It was like he had done this before, like done this track before. And, um, you know, a good battle with him and, and Justin Haley. But once he got through, he was gone. Yeah. He, he ran away. And it, it was, was fun awful. watching. He got under him, then Haley crossed him up, and then he crossed him back over. And then it was just game He's over. Gone. Like, it, it wasn't even half a lap later. He's already a second up. Uh, it's just like Didn't this they is... go like a green white checker or something they close. Did. Yeah, they they did a green white checker. Um, but he he was gone. He looks so good out there, and that Project Ninety One is probably one of the, the the best things that are going on for NASCAR teams right now. I mean, we've seen who have we seen? Kimi Raikkonen was one of the drivers yeah, so Coder. far. Jensen Button has now Jensen. done two races. Yeah, he, he was in that one too, and he looked pretty good uh, for a while until he had a he had a pit road entry and, issue. Yeah, which I think they need to look at that next year. Yeah, that's uh, got to change. You can't have two lines doing two different things. It's it just unless you put turn signals on it, <laughs> or just I'm pitting lights on the back of the car. <laughs> but it it just it was. Uh, like a commit, almost like you have to have a commitment cone there. With if you do that light, you gotta have a commitment cone. The light's gotta be on, and if you don't pit with the light on, then it's it's a drive through penalty or something like that. Just so you're not like faking people out. Um, or I, I don't know, I'm just spitballing here, but that that's they gotta do a little work on that. But, yeah, I do have one beef with the race though. What's that? You know you have cloud cover, which is gonna make it darker earlier, mm-hmm. and you're already starting an hour later. I think you need to make the lap decision before yes. you ever go green. They they knew it, like we knew it flipped that was the field. Happen. Yeah. I think we even talked about are they gonna mm-hmm. even get a hundred in with all the cautions they had early. Christopher Bell's team was super upset about that. He was running up front all day and his pit strategy was dependent on a hundred laps. I mean, you know, I guess you could say it's his team's fault for not anticipating that darkness was gonna play in. Into effect how do you there, anticipate but, right. are they going to go to 80 laps are they going to yeah right and that's, that's are they going to yeah. do 65 i mean it's you know you know you're not going to make it to 100 they're not coming back and racing 25 laps on the the next day this thing's going to be done and i, I, I it sounds like they need a call very late they did they absolutely because did because they're already in pit strategies and then they make a call and it's like well we're done too late we, we're it, uh, we're hosed it flipped the field. The top runners weren't back there. Nope. Although SVG was on that same strategy, but worked he's out for him. Stellar. I uh, he just he was so good. I I I I hope he comes back and does another race. Um did I see he was maybe testing Roval? I think he actually did his testing on the Roval. So it may have been beforehand. Yeah, I think he before he committed to the race, I think he did his testing at the Roval was my understanding. I think the biggest thing that the drivers ended up finding street courses are very different than the road courses. Oh, yeah, is they're used to running curbing and having runoff areas. This is a 90 degree, 90 degree turn. No runoff. Uh, you miss it. You're going under the tires and several of them found that the hard way. Well, they, I don't know if you caught this, but did you see the stat about the all-time like road course winners? No, I, I missed that. They were talking, it showed up, like Gordon and Stewart have like nine road course wins. Yeah, yeah. And it's Chase Elliott is third all-time with seven. And I'm sitting there thinking, those guys had two road courses a year. Yeah, yeah. It's now, now we have like six. Glenn. These guys are running multiple road course races. So, yeah, you're comparing an apple and an orange there. Yeah. But the they, crazy thing is the two of Stewart and Gordon are still up there. I mean, Chase Elliott's eventually going to pass them. But, but when you have quadruple the chances every year. I mean, what, what, what do we got here? So we've got Coda. We've got Indy. <laughs> we've got Watkins, Glen Sonoma, Chicago this year. They didn't go to Road America, too, don't they? They used to. Um, I think they went last year. They went last year, but Chicago replaced Road America on the schedule. Roval. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Can't stop coughing. 
So that's six. I don't think I'm missing anything that I'm aware of. Yeah, so you've got three times as many as, as it was. Like when I was a kid, it's like, oh, here in Watkins Glen weekend. Boring. Sonoma weekend or Sears Point weekend. Boring. And now it's just like, oh boy, here comes Sonoma, which, you know, the race issue wasn't that great. But I have a whole new respect that I did not have as a kid for the the, the road course. Yeah, six of them this year. So triple the opportunity. But still, like it's there's been a lot more parity on the road courses. Because I mean, even back then, you know, you had brought in Marcus Marco Sambros, speaking of Australia, and he came in and won a couple at Watkins Glen. You know, did Boris said ever win? I mean, he was always decently oh, well. He was always up there. <laughs> Boris said the third. He is 60 years old. Nope. He never won in the Cup Series. He won once in the Xfinity Series in the 2010 Napa Auto Parts 200 at Circuit Giles Villeneuve. Yeah, eight top tens. And he won one Craftsman Truck Series race at Sears Point, as I just mentioned. Okay, so I didn't I didn't know this until just now. Yeah, you know, they you know, they used to call it Sears Point. I always assumed it had something to do with the retail store. It does not. <laughs> uh, I figured it was some sponsorship thing. Nope. The Sears Point is a prominent landform just into the San Pablo Bay in Sonoma County, California. It is named after Franklin Sears, who settled on 600 acres south of Sonoma in 1851. He partnered with his father-in-law to purchase some 15,000 acres, which is now part of the present-day racetrack, Sonoma Raceway. Hmm. Oh, there you go. I learned Fun something. Fun fact for right? the day. Yeah, I learned something. Right? I mean, I assume, you know, kid in the 90s, Craftsman Truck Series, a lot of, a lot of Sears references in NASCAR back then when Sears was a thing. Uh, somehow it's still a thing, barely, but... Good to see the Craftsman name. I have to say, I'm I'm glad to see the Craftsman name back on the, the truck series. Yeah, it's good. That that uh never been excited for a title sponsor before, but that that was fun to see. And like, we're back. We're the Craftsman Truck Series. Yeah, I had one thought, but it skipped my mind here. <laughs> my my voiceover announcer voice. Tune into the Superstar Racing Series, Thursday Night Thunder <clears throat> on ESPN. Did you just come Wait. up with new series first? No, no, that's the that's that Tony Stewart thing, the SRX series. Yeah, it's called Thursday Night. It's, they do it called Thursday Night Thunder, I think is what they call the series. Starts in a couple weeks. Yeah, it's going to be fun to see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, Thursday Night Thunder, SRX moves to ESPN starting July 13th, I think, whatever the Thursday is. So a couple weeks from now. I think Alan Bestwick is the uh, announcer for that series. Tony Stewart owns the owns it. He's racing in it. The super, super, super star, superstar racing uh, experience. You know, it would be fun to see him bring back. And I had a, I really enjoyed watching it. The IROC series. Yeah. Oh, those are fun. Brought out in the Trans Ams and bring them in. Yeah. Indy, NASCAR, trucks, Xfinity. I think that's kind of what he's sort of trying, sort of trying to do with SRX. I mean, it's all short track racing. Um, I like Marco Andretti's in there. I think Ryan Newman is racing. Uh, what race is it? Uh, Marco Andretti's gonna be in a truck. I up. did see that. Yeah.
Yeah, so July 13th, 9 p.m. Eastern from Stafford Motor Speedway. Thunder Road They're Speed on the Bowl. schedule for ARCA this season. They're doing a race at Eldora, and then on 8-17, they close that at Lucas Oil Speedway. Ken Schrader is going to be racing in this. Uh, Austin Dillon will do part of the schedule. Who else? Camping. Um, yeah, Bush, Camp- Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, two debut. Greg Biffle. Castro Hamlin is going to come back. Hallie Deegan, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Hunter Ray, Tony Kanon, Casey Kane, Bobby Labonte. Harvick will be at Stafford in Berlin. Paul Tracy. Part of me wants to get Paul Tracy to come on here and just let him talk about the uh, Indy 500. Was that 2002? And just just sit back and listen to him rant for like half an hour because he he totally would. It'd be fun to do. He is still he will to his to he will take it to his grave that he won that race and that he got hosed. And he might be right. That was in the the book about the split with the, the the Indy Racing League and Cart, and you know the guy who wrote it didn't like flat out accuse Tony George of that, but they said that how could that have not been a factor in deciding that? Anyway, speaking of injury, still got my uh. Pull this out on my my fire suit mm-hmm. from my my drive. Still got that here. Still fits. Oh. On that note, what's coming up this weekend? Oh, Atlanta. NASCAR yeah. in Atlanta. Under the lights. IndyCar is not as off this weekend. We've got Silverstone for F1. At Toronto in two weeks. Um, Peacock. Talk about that next week. Yes. Probably just going to be a repeat of our rant from last year, but when you make the same mistake twice, you don't deserve any better. Um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to Atlanta. Some of the drivers aren't, but I don't know. I, I think it's fun. I wish it wasn't a super speedway. Atlanta Super Speedway, ASS. Yes. Oh, man. That, that uh, was Wednesday Night Dash and buying closed doors quiet right now. We are taking some downtime. We got to ramp that thing up now. Recruiting races will be coming up soon. Series schedules are posted. So if you're looking for something to drive, come on out. Wednesday night will be Arca's. We've expanded to a 10 race season and reduced the entry fee down to $40. So the price will, you know, it'll be a little bit smaller unless we ramp the thing up to 20, 25 drivers, which is what we're trying to do. So love rakes and arcade cars. You got some late night Wednesday availability. Come race with us. And Tuesday nights at the same time, 10 o'clock. Got a little bit longer races with the open wheel cars, the IR18 on iRacing. Maybe one day we'll get to broadcast that again. But I hope so. There's some good there, racing. There, there was some uh, sort of breaking news. There there was a division of motorsport games that was sold off to somebody. Uh, and it was like the only part of motorsport games that made money. So it, it seems like it's just very close to uh, to that <clears throat> complete collapse. I think it's funny too because anytime motorsport games post on social media, they always get a you know probably two thirds of the replies to their tweets and their their Instagram posts are like you know what you pound sand go away so iRacing can get the license back. 
but if you're interested, it is a free entry itinerary schedule. And Indianapolis and Michigan are going to be half distance races or about 250 miles. So a little bit of fun there. Yeah, Motorsport Network, which Motorsports Game Motorsport Games was a subsidiary of, was sold. Motorsport Network was, but Motorsport Games was not part of the deal. <clears throat> that was such a joke. Recently, the company finally released the long-awaited update for NASCAR Heat 5 that brought the next-gen car to the game. So literally, they just, you know, updated the car slightly. Make it look like a next-gen car that drives like an arcade. But on that note, forracingonline.com and racing online on social. Oh, and congratulations to Tyler Ginter. He uh, he won our, our, we announced last week he won. He claimed his prize. And if you saw my Instagram and my TikTok, uh, it is, uh, should be in his hands by now. So congratulations. Enjoy. Yeah. Thanks for following along. So we'll, we'll have another giveaway of some kind soon. Might have to do this uh, autograph die cast is like our birthday celebration thing every year. We give you the birthday present. Sounds like fun. I think it'll work. Again, at our 4 Racing Online, thanks again for watching. And we'll see you next week.